Hey everybody, it's another episode of Go Flix Yourself. My name is Ben Conowitz, and with me as always is the the unicycle to my bicycle, Bradford Oman. Hey, that's me. I have one wheel. And it's not as good as a bicycle. I, I don't know. I, I think it's a lot more entertaining to watch somebody on a unicycle than it is a bicycle. That's fair. Yeah, suck on that. And the tricycle to my bicycle, Nate Laux. Uh, I am the triumvirate of awesome in this group. You it's are true. probably the most stable out of all of them. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> That's saying something. <laughs> <laughs> We're all fine. Everything's great. <laughs> you guys want to talk about feelings? No, it's a movie podcast. Yeah, and fuck feelings. <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about that shit. I watch sad movies all the time. I'm an alpha male, and I, I watch action and comedy only. No, no, you're an elf male. Unless Joe Rogan's in this film, I don't want to watch it. And even if he is, I ain't gay. <laughs> has Joe Rogan been in a lot of films? Uh, I feel like he's been in something. He was on news radio. That's not that's a film. A, that is a TV show. <laughs> that's a TV show. That, that is odd to me, though. TV that, shows are very similar to films, though. Sure. They're like small films. Have They're we like had this conversation films. before? They're like films that have been broken up into multiple units. Yeah. I, I, what was that? What was that app that tried to do that for a while? Where Quibi, Quibi. yeah, Quibi, <laughs> Quick Quibi. Bites, Quick Bites. Quibi. Oh, that's what it's. I didn't know that. Uh, mm-hmm. So, thanks for joining us on another episode of Go Flix Yourself, Bradford Omen. Mm-hmm. By the way, wait, stop, 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 been in some uh, documentaries uh, called oh. DMT, the spirit molecule. <laughs> Is that a real thing? Oh, God. Steroids and whether they're not that bad. Uh, he was also uh, starred as himself in Here Comes the Boom. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. Of course. And himself in the movie Bright. Really? <laughs> I haven't seen Bright, so now I'm, oh, I'm man. super intrigued. I actually, I, I was not mad at that movie. Like, I know that it got... Not a lot of great reviews or anything, uh-huh. but it did what it was supposed to do for you. I, I enjoyed the world that they built. Yep, I right. really did. Between that and uh, Ben assigning American Ultra to Nate, we, he's got, we got a big Max Landis fan over here. Except that's not what he's. Oh wait, it's a deep cut for those of you listening. Max Landis is a screenwriter he's behind a screenwriter. American Ultra. And I, I Brian, know, but he's a piece of shit. I thought not, not a good guy. Did you? Did you I'm not supposed to but I'm really worried that I didn't watch the right film. <laughs> no, no, this was okay. no, no, so <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah. Wait, do the you movie, do you not rem- hold on, Brad. Movie, do you not remember watching American Ultra? Is it American Ultra? Oh yeah. boy. With Jesse Eisenberg? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. That was a good film. Like um, like a year ago. <laughs> yeah, I said that was uh, 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 uh Brad's like Wait, yeah, Chris Stewart, you, Topher did, Grace. Yep. Did you watch a movie that we gave you? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know that I did. I just made it up. Uh, nope, I remember that. I I don't even remember what it's called though. I made it up. It's American Alta. It's about uh, American-made makeup that women like. I'd watch it. <laughs> cool. Uh, Brad, <laughs> before we go any further. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, what's your favorite Halloween memory? Probably when I get, I'm just kidding. get what's married the sponsor? next year on Halloween. Yeah, Halloween 2024. Nah. They set a date for the wedding. That's a joke. Gonna we want to put go. it out there for sure. It was a joke that we made. It was. This is a really funny turn of events. We said uh, Brad's getting married on Halloween. You, Did you fucking asshole. Did you really bring last week's No, sponsor? he just left them here, and now he's oh. eating the <laughs> remainder. You can't do that. You crunchy bitch. Oh, my God, you crispy fuck. Don't do that. Anyway, they're, they're we, a little stale. We, ma- we made a joke. You didn't put the lid on? You didn't put the lid I on? I did, but the lid oh. did not hold. <laughs> it is the basement of that my That sounds home. like the Pringles' fault. <laughs> so uh, we made a joke that Brad was getting married on, on uh, Halloween, uh, this year, and it, it it took off a bit where some uh, people people it. asked, but to counteract that, Brad, particularly Beyonce, Britney, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the funny part is they have actually set the date for October thirty first, twenty twenty four. Not true either. Jesus I Christ. love it so much. No, no, it's it's so fun that you guys are leaning into We're it. We're not. It it's very you guys. It's not true. true. So October thirty first, twenty twenty four. Brad, Britney, Ben, no, are, ben and I not. are trying to move some things to maybe get there, well, but well, like I have a Halloween full schedule at the arcade, and there's a lot going on, but. Congratulations! You Ben's going to be th- celebrating Swalloween this year. Ooh, what is that even? What the <laughs> fuck? You know what it is. You know what that it is. That sounds horrible. Speaking of swallowing, uh, Ben, oh. 
Wait, what? what? Let me ask you a question. What? What's your favorite swallow memory? <laughs> well, I love the you know the, I love the headless horseman you know of, of creepy swallow. That's what? The, that's the porn I watch. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You could have gone with us. It's like a swallows of Capistrano thing, and you went with sleepy swallow. <laughs> oh, creepy swallow. Sleepy swallow. No, I didn't say sleepy swallow. Sleepy hollow is the is the movie. Yeah, I said creepy swallow. I know, creepy but got, not that, thing. it got too far away from. Yeah, the, oh, the, you, did, you did A to D. Wait, A to D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a to C. Dummy. Okay. Well, speaking of swallowing, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ben. Yes. What kind? Of, what kind of snack cakes you like shoving in your mouth hole? Wait, what? What kind of snack cakes you like shoving in your mouth hole? Little Debbie kind or what? Yeah. What do you De- like, Little Debbie? I, I'm what, fine. What is? You like Little Debbie? What kind of Little Debbie snack cakes? What you is like? a snack cake? Snack cake like a Twinkie or uh, a ho 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 or a ding dong. Christmas trees. It's cup. almost Christmas trees. Yeah. Season. Hostess cupcakes. Those are all snack. Those cakes? Those are all snack cakes. Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Um, I will say that I like. I probably like. Um, Oatmeal cream pies. Ooh, that's my favorite. Good. You don't like oatmeal cream pies? Yeah. Love oatmeal cream pies. What the fuck's wrong with you? Like, probably ho hos. Ho hos are good. Like, what are, do do fruit pies count? Mm, I don't think fruit pies are are cakes because they say pie, pie, pie in them. I do. How about like a cheese Danish? No, because that's not a, a a snack cake per se. I mean, I guess it's 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 kind of in between those. Cinnamon like, bun. Cinnamon bun. A like little, a hostess cinnamon bun? Is that a snack uh, cake? Like a honey bun? Yeah. Or kind of. What about a what about like a coffee cake? Because they they make some That's good coffee. Fine. That yeah, I, I like, like their coffee cake. I feel cakes. like the, when when I hear snack cake based on the definition you've been yeah. providing, I feel like the zebra. Yeah, zebra cake. Like zebra, that's that's like yeah. a snack cake. Absolutely. What about a fudge round? Or like a little, yes. d- little Debbie, right? Is that what you said earlier? Yeah, little Debbie. Okay. Oatmeal yeah. cream pies. Yeah. Like, All right. So no, uh oh, oh, oh still going home. Okay. How about you, Nate? Uh I'll go with I think I'm going to go with because I, I do like an oatmeal cream pie, but I'm going to go with a coffee cake. Okay, so you're not like one to put like a ding dong in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that's you don't want super a, fun a Twinkie surprise. Also super fun. Okay, well th- I have both of those for you today. Uh, today Twinkie surprise today, and a ding dong in your we, mouth. Today we got a twofer, folks. Oh no! Today I have Hostess Twinkies and ding dongs. Flavored popcorn. Oh no! Fucking yeah, baby! Oh, what? Why, so why do people have to ruin popcorn? Why? What? what do you mean? Put a little popcorn? bit of butter on this it, and I'm good. Sounds terrible. Oh, man. ladies and gentlemen, I can smell the sweetness. On and this, this is legitimately popcorn? from Hostess. This is legitimate Hostess. Wait, yeah, like who's popcorn. making the popcorn? Or is like Hostess like contracting with somebody? Or is yeah, this I'm like sure a, they are, but they don't like they partner, don't ever like yeah, they, they partner like, with Orville Red Oscar Meyer Wieners are now doing popcorn. It's not like when they have like the smart. Food Doritos popcorn, where like they have both brands on the yeah, display. that's I, what I'm saying. They, they don't come right out and say who the popcorn maker is, but you know, I assume it's whoever makes the who the, the company that owns Hostess probably owns another popcorn sure. company. Yeah, and... mm-hmm. Nate, I got chips. No, no, you don't. You don't get to have any more of those chili cheese chips. You you gave them up for Lent. Lent's a thing, right? Uh, it is a thing. Yep, correct. You did good. Okay. All right, which one are you guys doing first? I did the ding dong first. Just pop that ding dong right in your mouth. I did the, did the tweaker. Right. I'll, uh, I will say that it tastes like cereal. They both taste like cereal. It just doesn't taste good. The ding dong one don't. I don't like them. Am I wrong? No, no. I feel like I need a bowl of milk and just like that. That's like a. The chocolate on the ding dongs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thir- I'm 13. I will never stop this. The chocolate on the ding dongs popcorn <laughs> tastes like a almost like a cocoa crispies yes. chocolate. Yep. And the Twinkies actually, I don't really get a Twinkies taste. It no. just tastes tastes kind of like a a, a gl- glazed donut popcorn like it, it needs, almost. It needs Neither one of them are good. Yeah. This yep. is this is thanks for giving us cereal. I think that they're okay. Dry cereal. It's. It, it's not like terrible, yeah. but it's just not. It doesn't do what it's trying to do. Is give me a flavor of the thing. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I definitely don't think they succeeded in capturing the right flavor here. Nope, I agree. Somewhere a food scientist is crying. Well, guys, ding dongs and Twinkies popcorn. I found them at Dollar Tree in small bags <laughs> outside in the alley. <laughs> so go to Dollar Tree. Yeah, and there was plenty find of them there. I will say I have been looking for these for a while because. They kind of did like a slow rollout, like across the country for cool. whatever reason, and so like it took them a while to get to our area. So when they finally did, cool. I was, Brad, what's the last movie you saw, buddy? Uh, I watched the uh, making of documentary about how they make weird flavored popcorns. Mm. <laughs> uh, Nate, what's the last movie you saw, buddy? Oh, go ahead, Brad. Oh, we're reverting back to the guy that made a real bad joke. Okay, no, oh. Brad, what's the last movie you saw? What was bad about it? Everything. Go on. I don't. I do the thing. last movie I watched was The Money Pit with Tom Hanks. 
And Shelley Long. And Shelley Long. Yeah, have you seen the, this? Yeah, of course. Have you seen it? Yes, it's a very famous movie. Do you like it? I love the Money Pit. Yeah, uh, this is the first time I've seen it. I oh just, wow! I, I just watched it. I just watched yeah. it on a whim. It's a, it was a quick, breezy ninety-minute movie, and I oh, it's it was so good. It was one of the few Tom Hanks movies that I haven't seen, so I decided to watch it, and it's very, very funny. It is. Uh, it's there's a lot of great physical comedy yes. in it that yep. like you don't really see in comedies much anymore. Um, a lot, a lot of like really big set piece stuff yeah. that happens, and you're like, wow, that that took a lot of rigging to yeah. make that work. Great practical yeah. like uh, comedy stunt kind of stuff that yep. was really entertaining, um, and so it was it was slapstick without being over the top. It was it was a lot of fun. I really liked it. It wasn't like Monty Python or anything, but it was just really good. Yeah. Just good stuff with like the house constantly okay. going wrong and like things just being. Is that the terrible. concept of the movie? Yeah, so I've not seen it. So they 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 uh, decide to invest some money in uh, a house to to fix it up and like it seems like it's okay and then once they finally finalize the deal and get in there, everything just starts falling apart and going to shit and trying to get it fixed is a nightmare. Which is just buying a house. Yeah, nothing yeah. goes right and it's just it's crazy. But so it, it's a lot of fun though. But uh, they also do the thing where back then when they made these type of movies, they didn't do something that would normally kill the character. Right. You know, like, oh, uh, uh, Tom Hanks' character got launched 37 feet in the air yeah. and then just wo- you know, hit the ground and was like, oh, dust himself The off. Home Alone effect that would yeah. have killed those guys multiple it's, times over. It's, there's a little bit of that, yeah. but, but it doesn't go crazy. Yeah, exactly. It's not it's not uh, co- totally unbelievable. Um, and Tom Hanks is very funny in it. it it's, I like seeing the younger Tom Hanks where he was do- still doing like bigger comedy because in this one, uh, you know, one thing you don't get to hear him do a lot is his hysterical laugh. And he has the hysterical, like almost a where he, crazy. Yeah, where he, and he gets a little wheezy. He does that in the Burbs as well. He, he does it in uh, in Toy Story in a brief moment too. Yeah, when, yeah, when, yeah. He fa- when he fakes out Buzz Lightyear, and th- I love hearing that laugh from him because it's just it's so genuine it's and maniacal. Yeah, it's I really good. It. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I really I, I liked it a lot. It was it was it was a lot funnier than I thought it was going to be because I wasn't sure if the comedy was. Why gonna... did you decide on that? It was just a, a ninety minute movie, and yeah, I yeah, but like, did you were scrolling? Comics. Yeah, it was on Netflix, so oh, I, nice. I saw you. Um, but yeah, I and honestly, I think that it's ripe for a remake. I think that you could oh these days for e- sure, e- especially with all of the like house renovation like shows and stuff that are out there. You could easily do a thing where you have like a you know property brothers like and inv- like do a house kind of thing where it's like maybe or like a Chip and Joanna Gaines where they get a house. They, it's they, just a fucking nightmare. They don't. They do they do subtlety like this though because we're, we're talking i feel like today though they 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 go too far well no it's, be this, like, is, this so is gonna this is now they'll remake this but it'll be kevin james that's exactly yeah, exactly. you know and, and exactly. he'll be kicked by a horse and or kevin the, hart through, or through something the, through the second know? story window and it would murder anybody yeah. but nope oh he's just gonna dust himself that, off. that's what i'm saying is yeah. the subtlety they'll of this do it type wrong. of they'll like, do it wrong where you're where you're holding back on some of that yeah I would love, to I would love here. to love to do it with with somebody the right way because I think that you could easily do it. You could even do it like mockumentary style. I think. Who, who like, do you think would would play a good lead in that? Oh gosh, I don't even I don't even know who would be fun to do in it. I would, I would, yeah, who is like fun. a modern Tom Hanks right now? Like, <laughs> like, or like a, yeah, Brad, go. No, go, I just and like go. who in no, that? No, 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 and Brad, and go. I really don't know. Yeah. I'm honestly not sure. He did so. I mean, he just is so perfect in those roles, and he, that was a couple years after Big, I think. Yeah. And, um, it was 86. 86 was the year. I don't know. Reagan was in the White House. <laughs> um, is is Ryan Gosling? I mean, he's a little bit older. Oh gosh, for, actually, I would love to see. I think Ryan Gosling's a little older because Tom yeah. Hanks was like in his, I don't know, That's mid, what I'm saying. He's a little older, yeah. but yeah. I feel like he can fit that, that role. That would be really, really fun, well. actually. Yeah, I would love to see Ryan Gosling do it. I don't do know if there's like anybody that. younger that would maybe do that. I don't know. Let's have Ryan Gosling and Anne Hathaway do it. There we go. Well, d- recast. We yeah. just did a recast. There we go. Perfect. The Money Pit, and it'll be it'll be great. So yeah, I watched the Money Pit. That was the last movie I saw. What else did you see this week? Uh, I was assigned a movie by my my good friend. Um, you don't remember Ben Kinowitz? Okay, and he gave me a movie. It's a Kinowitz. Oh, Kinowitz. Yes, Kinowitz. No one is listening, Brad. Kinowitz. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the Lincoln Lawyer. This is the movie about the uh, lawyer who famously defended Lincoln. <laughs> I was just going to say, you're going to do something <laughs> stupid here. Uh, no, so this is a movie that is, uh, it's based on a book. I right? like this movie. Right? Yeah, it, it is, because they is. made a TV show that I actually liked it as well. Oh, you watched the TV show? I did. I it, thought it was pretty good. Is it better than the movie? No, okay. but it, it is good though. Pass. Well, uh, it's it's. it's <laughs> <laughs> you do not like the movie? No, no. no I I'm just saying if it's not yeah. as good as the movie, then I, I don't want to watch it. I think it's it's very good. But no, yeah, the, the movie is excellent. Yeah. So in my opinion, what you it think? could still be slightly worse than the movie and still Brad, be very good. What did you think? Uh, I 
it? No, I really like that actually. <laughs> I was gonna say, come on, no, man. So first of all, the, the it cannot be uh, overstated how effortless, effortlessly cool Matthew McConaughey Seriously, is. The, the charisma. Yeah, like just just the way he's got swagger for days. But just, it's it's so crazy to me because you know who he is. Yeah. So like you're sitting down and be like, well, I'm not falling for this again. And then you're like, I fell for it. Yeah. He's just so he's, good. Yeah. He's just he's very suave and he just has has just a real great way about him. You know. I think he talked about this film recently about. I saw him in an interview because I think he was in a lull in his career right before this. Um, so th- this would have been like post all of the rom coms. Yes. Yeah. This was 2011. And he, and, and he talks. That's what it was. He and he talked about like he got offered like 10 million dollars to do a rom com, and he mm-hmm. said I didn't want to do them anymore. He said there's nothing wrong with them. I just. I felt like I could do something different. Yeah, failure to launch four. Yeah, and and I'm yeah, sure I mean, he made... did. He did failure to launch. He did uh, wedding planner. He did uh, ghost of girlfriends past. And I don't hate those movies. Honestly, uh, they're, they're they're not terrible rom coms. Yeah. But like, didn't they call this like the start of the the reconnaissance? It might have been. I, I think the official reconnaissance was Dallas Buyers Club. But, sure, but I th- I'm sure this kind of helped pave the way for that. Yeah, I'm trying to find here because uh, Dallas Buyers Club. I think it was only a couple years after Lincoln Lawyer. Yeah, it would have been like twenty. So, so in two thousand six, uh, where is Dallas Buyers Club? No, Pretty like sure it's twenty thirteen. Yeah, so this is two thousand eleven. So he did We Are Marshall um, in two thousand six, and that was okay. Yeah, and so then he, in two thousand eight, I mean, he really didn't have much there. He did Fool's Gold, which didn't do well. That was a rom com. Um, Tropic Thunder, uh, He's which so funny in Tropic Thunder. Uh, and Tug then nuts. Go, 2009, Ghost of Girlfriends passed. Yeah. 2010, nothing. That's what it was. 2010, he did nothing. Yeah. And then he got the Lincoln Lawyer. Yeah, in 2010, he passed on every rom com <laughs> that was then available. Mud. And I've uh, heard Mud's good. I haven't seen it though. Uh, and then Magic Mike, and then Dallas Buyers Club, Wolf of Wall Street, Interstellar. Yeah, all that. And that was when. Yeah, and he he, he talks about this though, like this this film particularly yeah. being one of the films that gave him hope, because you know, I don't know who directed this, but like actually, his name is Brad Furman. Uh, he tried him. Like he he didn't. You know, nobody wanted to give Matthew McConaughey a role like this, was, and he did. Was Mud the one where it was the, the he went down to Bolivia and had the gold? No, or was that just called Gold? That's just Gold. Yeah. And when did that come out? That, that was came, later. That came out later. Okay, yeah. yeah. I love that movie. Gold. I still haven't seen that. Oh actually. my god, that's really good. I've uh, not seen Mud either, but I've heard so much. No, no, good Gold. About I have not. I know, seen but mud. I'm just, yeah. I'm just looking at Mud right now. And gold, Mud's heard. the fucking same thing. Okay, wow. Uh, but no, Brad Furman directed Lincoln Lawyer. He also directed Runner Runner, which sucks. But I visited the set Ooh, for that. Yeah, that's right. I forgot uh, about that. Yeah. Runner Runner was uh, Justin Timberlake and Hold ben on, no, 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 no. Uh, Ben Affleck. You heard me say Ben. I didn't. I really didn't. Yeah, he didn't know was, was, I didn't know if it was Ben Kingsley or and Ben Anthony Affleck. Mackie. I was yelling in my own ears. Yeah. So, um, and um, uh, what's her face? Uh, Gemma Arterton. Ar- Gemma Arterton. Yeah. Gemma Arterton. Gemma. Um, <clears throat> we. I have, I have a fun story about meeting her in the uh, hotel bar afterwards. Whoa. Not like that. Well, hello, <laughs> Gemma. And she came down and she like just was hanging out with some of the other reporters. Go that were on. There and she's cute. She is. is she cute she, in person? She, oh, absolutely. And she was very nice, too. She was She was telling us things she shouldn't have told us. Um, oh, and now you can't say things. I, I mean, I probably shouldn't. It, it's Now it's inconsequential stuff. It's stuff that hasn't happened and like won't happen now. So so you probably you could say that. Uh, no. You probably just say a little bit of it without naming names. Then I mean, I would have to name was it, what, No, just tell us. Was it like this person slept with this person or this no, 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 project no, it, was going to yeah, happen? Yeah, it was a project that she was going to do and it just didn't, okay, ended gotcha. up not coming to fruition at all. Gotcha. So, so, so the, the, the live action version of the Jetsons never came to fruition. You're not too far I, off. I, I, was, would, I would watch the Jetsons. She was supposed to do a remake of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. For real? Uh, yeah, for real. And it didn't didn't. Oh, yeah, ever clearly that didn't work yeah. out. Um, but, Somebody sold her a bridge. All right. Yeah, well, cool. thanks for this, good, everyone. Good for that, I guess. Thanks. Well, I got a bridge to sell you for that yeah. dead air. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're fucking assholes. Uh, but yeah, no, I really like the uh, the Lincoln Lawyer. It's a, a solid uh, courtroom uh, drama, and it has some great twists and turns. Ryan Phillippe is is uh, really good in it as just a royal prick. Uh, I like. He seeing, plays a good asshole. Though, always right? like seeing John Leguizamo in a movie. Never yep. try that. The one thing that I do wish is um, it was I, Mercedes instead of Lincoln. <laughs> um, I wish that they had uh, established a little bit more, and maybe this is something they do in the TV series, Nate. Uh, more of a, a strong dynamic between Matthew McConaughey and his driver, because it felt like there could have been more there. Like they had a, a little bit of banter, and like they kind of established that now, they're, they they work the well together. But Brad's favorite movie of all time is Green Book. 
So wow. it really does. He does really need like a dynamic wow. between the driver and who's in the back seat. So Green no, go go ahead, go again. Sucks, uh, but no. Yes, there is <laughs> the, the driver in the the TV show actually has a more prominent role. Yeah, I like, that's I, I figured as much because it, it felt like a relationship that was like ripe for developing a little bit more into like a proper you know friendship you know collaboration whereas this was just giving him like a, a smaller part yeah from what i understand i have not read the books but the the show is a little closer to the the actual source material and so if you haven't seen the lincoln lawyer like brad the, just very quickly what's the premise so matthew mcconaughey plays a lawyer who literally works out of a black lincoln that he gets driven around in uh he's a little bit of a shyster lawyer he's constantly like getting criminals off and like pulling off sneaky things as a way of like getting around the system and stuff like that uh but he does have a little bit of a conscience he does try to do the right thing for the most part um but he has a little bit of like slick you know sneaky ways of going about it and uh he gets hired uh by ryan Philippi for a case where he's being accused of uh beating and attempting to rape a prostitute and it's ryan Philippi, and he maintains that he's innocent very convincing about it and then it turns out that the whole reason he uh, hired Matthew McConaughey was a way of setting him up to make sure he got off even though he knew he was guilty and like he couldn't actually do anything about it when he found out that he Brian Phillippe was guilty and so there's some double crosses and some interesting turns and uh, it's it's a uh, it's a it's a fun suspenseful legal drama yeah I, enjoy I really it. like it yeah, yeah. good agree. stuff good stuff uh, other movies in that similar vein that I like um, not necessarily the same movie whatsoever but it, it gave me Michael Clayton vibes yeah, because it's you know George Clooney is is really epically good as Michael Clayton. He is, and he's a fixer, you know, type mm-hmm. thing. And McConaughey is a, a sleazier version of that in yeah. this, but still pulls it off in that in that McConaughey way, where you honestly, you know, you can see why people trust him. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I trust Matthew McConaughey. I would to man, be my lawyer. I would. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna have him uh, just narrate my life. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Ben, what's the last movie you watched? Is that is that it for you? That's it. Yeah, right, right, right. Kind, of, kind of kept it low key. I've been reading a book. What? Yeah, whoa. Stop. Stop. Stop! Stop! No, you haven't. Is no, it no. the good Come book? On. Is it the good book? Is it the good book? I've actually read like three books lately because I. No, you haven't. No, for hundred percent. I read. So I read a book. Uh, I um I did this a while back, but like it was um I read uh, the book about the making of Oppenheimer. And then I I read a new really released book about the making of Nightmare Before Christmas because the thirtieth anniversary and like it's uh it was in theaters again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, welcome to go flips yourself where you flip the page here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good idea. Um, and then now I'm in, I'm reading uh, Surely You Can't Be Serious, which is a book about the making of Airplane, uh, which has been fascinating and hilarious. So. so- can you not like find out all that information on like the IMDb? Yeah, just you know, DB, just read it. No, IMDb trivia page. No, just read, read it online. I have it explained to you on a YouTube video. No, because that's the thing is like a lot of the stuff like it's some stuff that like doesn't get covered in interviews on the publicity circuit because you know someone didn't answer or ask the right question or yeah. you only have a limited amount of time to speak with somebody else and you can't cover everything and so these books. Uh, a lot of them are written by people who are taking years to uh, um, they're, they're either with the production of the film and like watching and interviewing people as it goes along and stuff like that. Was that the case in the Oppenheimer one? Yeah, Oppenheimer. They were like they were around for part of it and everything like that. Um, and then and the, but it's also like talking to them afterwards and like you know looking back and at the production and then like same thing with the night before Christmas one. They are basically just spending years speaking to all of the key filmmakers, you know, department heads and stuff like that and painting a picture of like what it was like to make the movie at the time and that okay kind of so since this is about a film still I have two questions for you uh first when is oppenheimer coming out because i'd like to see it again um so it's supposed to be it's supposed to be coming back to imax relatively if oh it, i'll go see if it it's not IMAX already again. if not already it will be ben shortly. ben I would check your local. He saw Oppenheimer already. I saw it in, in IMAX. He didn't see it in IMAX. No, I saw it. In, in, it's in, meant to be saw. Yeah. Do we okay, agree? fine. It's meant I to be saw it in a theater. Check God, your check Jesus. your local listings. It might be because I will go back and see it. It again. might be back in IMAX already. Um, but on, uh, but uh, aside from that, no, uh, I'm sorry. I'm just eating these uh, popcorn. Really delicious popcorns <laughs> that I found on the couch. Oppenheimer uh, will also be released on uh, home media in December. Okay, then the second question was, uh, did you learn anything about the making of that film from that book particularly that you thought was fairly interesting? Oppenheimer or, or yeah. The Night Before Christmas one? Uh, Oppenheimer. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the Oppenheimer one, is it's full of like tons of int- uh, Because I haven't details. heard any drama or anything like that. No, no. no. Tell, tell, the, tell the, 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 um, the Emily Blunt story. No, no, the, the oh. Sa- Safdie. 
Oh, so um, th- this th- this uh, funnily enough, this was something that did come out in an interview, but I didn't I hadn't found out about it until I read the book. Uh, so Benny Safdie, who plays one of the key scientists on Oppenheimer's team, he's the one who is kind of like a little bit of opposition, and he's the one who kind of turns tall, on, on black Oppenheimer. hair, and has the mm-hmm. accent, has the thick mm-hmm. accent. Yeah. Uh, he actually had a crossroads where. He could have gone on and had a career as a real physicist. Like the actor yeah, and director. The, a- the actor, yeah, Benny Safdie. Uh, but instead, he chose to get into filmmaking and acting. If you had those options, what would you do? Because he's not a huge actor. No, no. He, but he directed but, but he's Uncut a, Gems. But he's, yeah, but he's a pretty, oh. fairly well-known, you know, uh, uh, I would so, say yeah, prestige go that filmmaker. Way. Yeah, I'd go that way. Stop eating the chips, Nate. <laughs> but also the fact that, like, so he understood what they were doing, right? They're talking about the math, and he kind of gets it probably more than anybody else. Yeah, I mean, I, I get I, it. I love that. Oh, sure you do. But I, yeah. but I love that when. But they did. When there is some crossover where. And one thing they did mention too, though, is a lot of the people did enough research that they were able to kind of like do improvisation and talk about things as if they did know about the science and That's whatnot. That's crazy. So, yeah. So that was pretty cool. But uh, one of the other interesting things was uh, on a Christopher Nolan set. One of the things that he. Um, expects of his cast is he doesn't like them to show up and have if they're doing like a period movie uh, having any sort of like modern things on them like he doesn't want them coming to set with their phone he doesn't want to see them wearing like a puffer jacket you know if like anything like that he wants the actors always to be ready to like jump into like a scene because he runs such an efficient set that they move very quickly and like when he needs them he so wants them to come be in your costume yeah well i mean that's what you do when you're an actor anyway like you're like you're if you're there on set to shoot you're already in your costume but he don't, don't, don't he, they go to the, the their dressing rooms and stuff to get ready yeah but what what he means like so oftentimes what happens on a set is like even if you're in full costume sometimes you'll still like We'll have you'll have like a jacket on. You'll have your forever. Apple Watch gotcha, on. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah, or, yeah. You, or, you have, or your phone. Yeah, exactly. Yep. He doesn't want any of that, and, and the actors know that. And it's because, and, and to Brad's point, he, he wants in a in a scene. He goes, "Okay, actually, I want that actor to come in to the scene and improv this. Yeah. Just so right. Everyone's now. ready to go, yeah, exactly. and yeah. everyone's in in the moment. And so uh, Emily Blunt made the mistake one time because it was cold where they were shooting, uh, and she showed up on set like just before she was supposed to shoot her scene, and she was wearing UGG boots. And Emily, the way Emily Blunt described it is that Christopher Nolan gave her a very Devil Wears Prada, like up and down, like, like really, this is what we're doing. <laughs> what we're doing? And so she's like, just don't like, be mean to Emily Blunt. She seems to like. He, he and he, that's the thing. He, he he wasn't. He just he did. You know, it was a little a play- tongue in cheek. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a playful sure. thing. And he's like, it's, she's like, so I didn't definitely didn't show up on set again with with UGG boots. And I, as a wrap gift, she sent him uh, a box of UGG boots after production was over. So I thought that was pretty funny. It's, a, it's adorable. Uh, but no, because Emily Blunt, national treasure. It's true. The airplane book I'm reading right now is hilarious because the person who wrote it, they interviewed. Uh, Jim Abrahams and Jerry and David Zucker together. Oh boy. So the entire oral history, like there's a great like dynamic between them sure. where like they're responding to each other and they're saying things and you can tell they're very quick witted and just the way they talk about stuff. Well, and yeah, it, it's it makes it them. Like it makes it so much fun. They're the most quick witted, yeah. you know? Like it makes, they it, are it, makes it so like much fun. Kings of comedy. That's and amazing. there's a lot of really fascinating things about the movie that I, I just didn't know. Okay. So it's good stuff. Books. Lots of books. I like books. What's the last movie you saw, Nate? Um, the last movie I saw was The Negotiator. Um, oh. I've seen some other films, but I did watch The Negotiator, which was assigned to me by my friend Ben Conowitz. Not true. Not true. <laughs> he never remembers, but that's okay. Uh, no. Yeah, hey, buddy, you've always got a 50-50 chance. Yeah, I know. I and honestly, that. the thing is, if it's a good movie, it's probably me. Well, oh. actually, no, that's not true, because he tried to assign me Swingers, because uh, Ben thought he had me this week, and yeah. so... And I, I haven't seen Swingers in like 10 years, so I really wanted to watch it again, so I wasn't going to tell him I already saw it. Um, so I but it wasn't even my turn to... Uh, yeah, but then, anyway, and then doesn't matter, doesn't Brad's matter, like, matter. you don't have him. And, uh, and then we got fighting and didn't talk so about it. So how was Swingers? <laughs> uh, the Negotiator. Uh, so The Negotiator is an R-rated film. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it has Samuel L. Jackson in it, who has a little bit of a mouth... Have you guys noticed has, like a little bit of a mouth Has on Sammy Jacks ever been in a PG-13 or lower movie? Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. He's, Are you he, sure? He's the Incredibles. Let, he, he's letting his voice to kids' movies. I don't know. I mean, it just feels like he's got a... There's probably an outtake of The Incredibles. Where's my motherfucking super suit? Oh, I'm sure there is. You know this. I think I've said this before. Any film that's set in Chicago or has Chicago as a like a like a a backdrop like a backdrop, mm-hmm. I'm gonna love it mm-hmm. because I love the city of Chicago so much. And so this is this is built around Chicago PD. This is a fraud case, actually built around a, a real fraud case mm-hmm. that happened that isn't 
isn't like the movie, but was kind of in, it inspired some of the narrative yeah. as well. Um, but it, it stars Samuel L. Jackson and Kevin Spacey, and a bunch of guys that you've seen in so many. Yeah, different it's films. a movie that is filled. With, <laughs> hey, I know that guy. <laughs> yes, uh, all great actors too. Like yeah. all all actors that name one have not done or have probably not won a ton of awards name yeah. one um uh david morse is a, oh, yeah. a fantastic yeah. Yeah. Actor. huge character really actor. good character actors yeah um john spencer who died uh john spencer did win emmys for his role on the west wing which mm-hmm. is one of my favorite shows fantastic actor um ron rifkin's a great actor mm-hmm. too so th- these are guys J- that like I, jt walsh man jt walsh JT walsh died walsh, yeah. before this film was released did yeah you know that? real um, real bummer that he died so soon i would have loved to have seen what he could do today so that's what i'm saying like the so many guys that are in there and it, it is primarily men that are in this film it's around the chicago pd and fbi and um samuel L. jackson is kind of it, Set up, but also, you know, you, you wonder, there's times in there where you do wonder, is this kind of like a mystery? Is this yeah. guy, you know, um, part of it? Oh, younger Paul um, Giamatti, too. Uh, Paul Giamatti's in it as well. But I don't see him as a character actor. He's kind of like, At this time, he was, though. Yeah. No, I, it was interesting yeah. to see this. Uh, when, when was this made? 1998? 90, How was Kevin Spacey? Kevin Spacey, it's, he's so freaking talented. Yeah, he's like, so he's so good like, in this movie. It sucks that he's a piece of shit. I know. I hate that he's a piece of shit. But I just I you, love you, him you in this movie. He didn't say his name, and so I had to bring it he up. He did. He did say Kevin Spacey. Oh, I didn't think. Yeah. He did. Uh, so interesting about this film, by the way, is Kevin Spacey was supposed to play Samuel L. Jackson's role. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah, initially, and they had uh, Sylvester Stallone. Um, in there as oh, well. Would have been a better, would have been a better film. No, it no, would not. That would have been fifty percent less. And good. No, <laughs> they moved Kevin Spacey to that different role, and then got Samuel L. Jackson to do what was Kevin Spacey's initial role. That's that's um, brilliant. Yeah, whoever yeah. figured that out, give them a yeah, raise. Yeah. <laughs> that's when the studio notes are like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, this is why you guys get paid. So th- this is a, a a really fun film. Mm-hmm. It is a really n- just supremely acted film. Like there, it was, I was, I loved every scene in this film. Every actor chews up scenes. It is fun. It, it's not anything that's gonna, you know, it's not an award winning film or anything. It's not an Oscar level kind of film. It is that 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 perfect. 90s action film. I don't yeah. know if that makes sense. No, like, no, exactly. Like, yeah. Like it just is everything that I wanted. By the way, do you guys remember the last film or the the film before this that Kevin Spacey and Samuel L. Jackson were in? Oh, Kevin shit. Spacey and Samuel L. Jackson were in a little fo- a little film in the early 90s called. It was actually like two years before this. Film. Yeah. So, so it was ninety four, no ninety six. This this came out in ninety eight. Oh really? Oh, ninety eight oh, sure. oh, oh, so was released July 29th, 1998. Kevin Spacey ninety six. You might not have seen it. I love this film, but you might not have seen it. Is it the Big Kahuna? <laughs> is it? Uh, is it? Is it? Uh, it, it, it training Day Two. <sighs> it's a film called A Time to Kill. Oh, I actually haven't seen A Time to Kill, but I've heard I have heard it's very good. I love. And it. I actually didn't even know uh, Kevin Spacey was in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, according to IMDb is but I mean Matthew McConaughey, right? Yes. Yep. Um it, did, did we talk a, about that the other day where there was a we bunch make, of courtroom mix, dramas mixed, about this? We, yeah. mixed, we mixed up the <laughs> juror and the time to kill yep, on, on yep, an old yep, episode, yep, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so cuz there was a couple of If you were in courtroom. your car and you were saying that's not what that movie is, we know, we know. <laughs> <laughs> the client, the firm, the yeah. rainmaker, the juror, the yeah. jury. Won't be the last time we get something wrong the either. The rural but. juror, <laughs> runaway jury. <laughs> There's so many. Yeah. Runaway yeah. bride. <laughs> yeah, a time to kill is the a time to kill is the courtroom drama from the mid 90s that's the one with the famous yes they deserve to die and i hope they burn in hell is um classic uh, kevin spacey <laughs> sandra bullock uh america's sweetheart uh kevin spacey oliver platt that guy love oliver love oh, love, platt. love <laughs> Lisa platt yeah uh, so. op is what i call him no oh, that's ron howard uh, so if if you can't see this film see it it's a lot of fun i know it's 20 what five years old uh, and Gosh, Jesus! That's I know, crazy, right? Or twenty six, almost twenty six. Yeah, I but, can't do math. But no, I, I love. I it's love so much movie. fun. Yeah. Samuel Jackson is great in it. He's not even. He- he is Samuel L. Jackson, there, but yeah. he's not as bombastic as sometimes he gets now. But yeah. he's really good in there. Um, and again, I hate saying it, Kevin Spacey's fantastic he in is. this. He is. Uh, but everyone else is as well. And there's some really good performances in this. And it, it's a good. I, I don't want to call it a mystery. 
It, would you call it a mystery no, in some it's, sense? It's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's a, a thriller, hostage, maybe? Hostage thriller, yeah. Thriller. yeah. Um, um, but yeah, because in, in the case we didn't... We there's, didn't there's a lot of twists and turns. In case we didn't say, the, the the premise is basically is Samuel Jackson is a hostage negotiator for the police. He's very good at his job. That's where the negotiator comes and from. And then right? all of a sudden, he, <laughs> <laughs> he, he finds that he uh, is being accused of a crime, and he says he's innocent. He has no idea what's going on. And so in order to try and rectify the situation, he himself takes hostages um, in one of the uh, downtown buildings in Chicago. But here, here's the twist. He knows all the tricks. Yeah, exactly. And Kevin Spacey is another hostage negotiator f- from across the city. And Samuel Jackson specifically requests him to come because he has no ties to any of the people in his department. And he thinks that there's some corrupt people around. And so then they... Uh, it was the Chicago PD. Of course yeah. there's corrupt people in there. So yeah, Even though you love the city, but you talk shit about it. That's cool. Well, no, I, that's no, why funny. I love it. There's, just, right, there's all those layers. You I, love yeah. corruption? I love corruption. You love corruption? Yeah. yeah. Well, wow. I, I just Nate Laux, I, Nate, I love corruption Laux. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, He's a well, dirty, dirty dog. Dirty dog. What we else did, did you watch, Nate? Uh, I started my Christmas movie watching. Oh, boy. Um, oh boy. Uh-huh. It's November 1st. Yeah, November 1st when Christmas starts. Yep. It, there's so many good Christmas films that I've got to... And there's new Christmas yeah, films. There's like two I'll, good Thanksgiving movies, and all the Thanksgiving decorations suck. There's, yep. there's Who cares? No, I don't love Thanksgiving. It's fine. There's I no. like I like the food around Thanksgiving. I like pumpkin pie. But like, I'm not sitting here... Do you like turkey? I don't like turkey. I love turkey, actually. There's nothing good about this time of year. I like turkey. I love pumpkin, pumpkin pie. But like, I don't I don't, I don't, don't need fucking like belt buckle hats decorated around my house. I don't need fucking like a bunch of brown, red, and orange shit. I need a cornucopia filled with squash and other stupid vegetables. Pilgrims and Indians, as for, if that happened. For like, decoration. In that way, I, don't, yeah. I don't need this. Just give me the fucking food, and yeah, I'll decorate for Christmas it. starting November first. Put up your Christmas lights, and everyone's happy. Exactly. Right? Why wait to decorate? Why, why spend all this time putting up Christmas decorations if you're going to enjoy it for a couple you, of weeks? Enjoy them for two months, folks, fucking, and let it be. Are you, and uh, let them go all the way into January. I don't care. Yeah. I don't even are you the shit. Reverend Jesse Jackson? Uh, I, I, listen, I I will preach Christmas till I die. <laughs> don't wait to decorate. <laughs> 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 That's all I heard. That's what I'm saying. Now, listeners of this podcast, I do love Christmas movies. I, I love Christmas time. I love. I'm, I'm with Brad. I love the Christmas season. I love how saccharine it is. I love. I just love everything about it. Yeah. I love people. I, I know it's, it, it balances between some of the most depressing moments of people's lives because they can feel alone. Pass. It's also some of the most happiest moments of people's lives, and Pass. I try to get really happy around this season. Yeah. So, yeah, um, good. Okay. Perk up, buttercup. Yeah, all right. Christmas so this is going to be great this year. First two films I've watched um, are films I've obviously seen before, but the first one I watched was Spirited, uh, the film that came out last year with... Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, the one that's it, just okay. I like it. Oh, I like it a lot. It's better than just okay. It's I like a, it a lot. It's all right. Oh, it's, no, 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 no. It's, 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 it's very good. Fine. It's it is better than just okay. It is a fine movie. No, it is, it is a very good movie. I like just it. Just fine. On, on a grading scale, you're giving it like a C minus with that, and I'm giving it like a B. No, I'd give it a C plus. I'd give it a B plus. I really love it. A C plus? I'd give it a B plus. I'd give it a B plus. C plus. It's funny. It's got actually a great soundtrack. The movie, the soundtrack is very good. It's a little too long, and I feel like it kind of loses its way in the end. Nope. But it's a pretty decent film. Yeah, B plus, C plus. I like it quite a bit. And then the other one was a film I I, I gave you, I think, and I don't think you loved it, but uh, the Feast of the Seven Fishes, which is a film. No, it's with pretty good. I like Skyler Gisando and so C minus, Brad. Um, this is a film. What I love about this is. Christmas films in the 80s, even if they're filmed recently, set in the 80s is even better. Mm-hmm. I love the 80s Christmas stuff. Yeah. And so um, this is a film that is about uh, the Feast of Seven Fishes, which is a Catholic thing that people do in New Jersey and Pennsylvania, uh, where they cook seven different types of fishes um, on, on right before Christmas. Um, and it's 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 a it's a film about a, a an Irish Catholic family, and uh, it's very much a coming of age movie yeah, centered around this kid who's like trying to figure out what he's going to do with his life, and, and it's kind of a, a, a love story too, or yeah. like you know, there's a there's a, and it, it's just I, I don't know why I, I love this film. I just no, it's really solid. Do. It's solid. Um, Wasn't that a better episode of the Bear though? It's not the same thing. It actually, it it does have '80s bear elements to it in that the family has oh, the these... pieces of seven fishes. Oh yeah, no, they talk. Yeah, yeah they, they talk, talk about, about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but the fa- and the family has a, has a somewhat similar vibes. Not yeah. not exactly. Not quite as toxic or crazy. No, uh, but the, that kind of um, almost mobster Catholic. Yeah, type of fast fast talking. You know. Yeah, so better as an episode of the bear. That's fine. Um, but yes. So Pretty I watched those two. I'll, I'm going to keep on watching more this week. I'll update everyone else on your list. I would like to know what your favorite. <laughs> 
Christmas film is, and if there's any I haven't seen, I don't care if it's a Hallmark Christmas film. I've watched. Yeah, a lot, honestly, but, like, if you can chime in with something that is just something the, or, or that like Christmas is, related that Nate maybe hasn't seen, he will watch. Or it. yeah, a film you love that like hey, more people need to see this, like The Feast of the Seven Fishes. Again, if you've not seen this film, I think it's on Netflix or Peacock. It's on Peacock, I think. Um, so you can actually watch it. Watch it. It is a lot of fun. I like this film a lot. Um, there you go. But. Yeah. Uh, All right. Let me know what Christmas film you. Ben, like. what's the last movie you saw? Uh, last uh, movie I saw, I saw a documentary on Netflix called Sly. Oh, is it about spies? N- no, it's about Sylvester Stallone, oh. the famous movie film actor. Hey, hey Ben, I've been wondering this: who would win in a fight, Arnold or S- Sylvester? Like in a real fight today? Yeah. Like, like, like tonight? Yeah, Stallone. Nope, Schwarzenegger. Really? Yep. With all the injuries Stallone has had. Schwarzenegger is in far better shape. Really? Yep. Um, and he honestly, like a, he looks like a fat piece of shit now. What? <laughs> so Stallone, uh, in this documentary, honestly does go through and, and talk about the injuries that he had sustained. He has not been the same since uh, he broke his neck in the Expendables, the, the first one. Mm-hmm. He really did break his neck, and and since then it has been hard for him. They don't really go really into it, like like super far into it, but they do. The, the vibe is very much oh that's why he's taking a reduced role in you know <laughs> Expendables two and three and four yeah that's why he just takes the phone calls now it's true he's just the receptionist yeah uh, D- does he does he produce quite a few films or no so they didn't so the, I I I liked the documentary the thing and I'm not here to compare Arnold Schwarzenegger to, to Sloan through their documentaries that's insane sounds like it. What I would say is I would have liked to see the same style where they got you got three ver- because it was it was 90 minutes of this slide documentary and they spent 65 of them talking about Rocky and Rambo which and, are his two biggest films and I get that. right but and then, and then the last whatever minutes talk about the expendables so it's basically just the three where franchises did, where did throw mama from the train come in he wasn't in what was it that. stop or my mom will shoot there you go was. I forget the mom movies cool bad so, moms Throw Mama uh, from the Train. Who was the Billy Crystal? Billy, Crystal. Billy Crystal. Crystal. Okay, yeah. yeah, I knew Danny DeVito, but um, so they do. They do mention Stop or My Mom Will Shoot, and Schwarzenegger is in the documentary, and they talk about the. Oh, rivalry. really? He is. Yeah, the rivalry back in the day. They, they've obviously buried that hatchet a long time ago, um, ten years or so. Um, but the the idea here is, I liked what I heard about Rocky. I liked what I heard about Rambo. Um, I would have loved to hear any sort of anecdotes about Judge Dredd or just just and and not not to even. He was. He just hates those movies so much. He has disdain for his entire career, other than when he was an actual actor. And so he they 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 focus a lot on Copland, in the in the, because that was his, supposed to be his like return. To, so he talked about him, you know, uh, acting against or with Bobby De Niro, and how that scene in the movie they showed the scene and they showed him and what he got out of De Niro as a performer, and all of this speaks to the fact that Stallone had clearly a lot to do with the producing of this documentary. Um, it was just... Is it because you think he thinks he's better than he is? I think that he just... He's so sad. It just To me, the whole documentary Crumbs Across is very sad that he wasn't taken more seriously as an actor. I, I am not nearly as big of an Arnold fan, or haven't been as big of an Arnold fan as you have. Um, and I don't know if you heard Brad met him, but... Um, oh my God. <laughs> but... I have uh, since, no, no, fuck that. I'm out. No, nope. no, no, no. This is no, good. No, <laughs> the last year or so, I've, I've, I've actually, for some reason, because there's documentaries, things like this, I've gotten more into Arnold, and I sent you guys that Conan podcast with Arnold on it. What I love about Arnold is how vulnerable it's, the strongest man in the world gets now, and how honest he is, and how he knows who he seems to know who he is better than uh, a lot of people a lot of men strong men his age and i just i love that about arnold and i don't I get, I, i'm getting that maybe that's not I, where I sylvester want, is so i want you guys to watch this it's 90 minutes it's, it's it's a breezy and there are things in there that you have not heard before i promise you um so it's it's well worth a watch um the thing that stallone uh he he has done so much with not being a very well educated person and I, I mean that in the in the best sense of the term, because he he came from nothing. His dad was in it, you know, up until the guy's death, was a literal piece of shit. He was in competition with both of his sons their whole childhoods. He he paints the picture of oh my goodness, my dad, you know, like in the documentary they say 
after Rocky comes out, the director of Rocky gets a script from or gets a phone call from Stallone's father saying, "Hey, I've got a I've got a real Rocky story for you. I, I wrote a script, and I want you to direct it." Jesus Christ! And it's like, well, no, your son already did that, and it went great. So he was all his father was always in competition with him. And there's a scene I, I wouldn't even say any more than that. There's so much that goes into his dad being a complete asshole. Now, Schwarzenegger's father was a literal Nazi, and and he was a, he's not a great guy. But he died a lot younger than Stallone's father. Stallone's father hung on for, for decades, and they had a falling out and a reconciliation. And I, I do feel like that Stallone always looked at it like he was trying to prove something, mm-hmm. and that's honestly why he got hurt in The Expendables. The whole documentary leads up to the fact that he was always performing for people other than himself. He was always trying to prove everybody wrong, where in the 80s he was trying to fight his critics in alleys because they didn't like you know, the, his follow-ups to Rocky. Like that's insane, right? Who would do that? But he was—he's not that smart. He—he—he's he, he, very talented at at taking a script and writing it, and then and in the moment, adding things to it in in improvisationally that work, right? He got really good at that, and so it does showcase his talent in that way. It worked in Rocky, it worked in Rambo, and it didn't necessarily work in so many other films that then he just became kind of like a, the meathead mm-hmm. of the 90s, right? And then Copland was supposed to be his return to form as like, I can act, I want to prove myself. And then it bombed. So then what do he do? He goes back to Rocky. Like, it's just he kind of always goes back to these franchises, and he's just, he's he, he comes across, in my opinion, a bit like a wounded duck, yeah. where he just has regrets about a lot of things. And it's a little sad, whereas when I watch the Schwarzenegger documentary, he's very proud of of everything he's accomplished, and he's done so much, and also calls his father a Nazi. Yeah, and like, but also uh, in the kind of he's like, but it wasn't like every memory I had with my father was bad though. Like he lives within the, that nuance of like it just. I, and I, 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 even though I'm a big Schwarzenegger fan, I do think that Arnold is just a very brilliant person. Like he just has yeah. a mind, and Stallone is is truly is that thuggish kind of bummy meathead that kind of just. Tried so hard to write these. He's write had a great himself. life, a great career. But. Exactly, but but there's a there's a reason why there are very stereotypical roles that he did and he was able to do. Yeah, uh, it's 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 fucking fascinating though. I really do think you should watch it just just to see the narrative of how he kind of like shapes the the progression of his life through this documentary. It's very interesting. All right, okay. What else you watch? Uh, I watched my assigned movie, uh, Three Ten to Yuma. Yes, from uh, who you assigned that to? Uh, I believe it was you. It was me. It was you. Uh, Yuma. It was Yuma, Christian Bale, and uh, and and a, and a very uh, svelte uh, Russell Crowe, and uh, and 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 Luke Wilson, which I didn't really realize was in that movie. Ben Foster. Oh yeah, him too. Jesus. No, I'm just fucking. Around. Um. So the story is that uh, Christian Bale plays a uh, Civil War um, survivor that has a fake leg. And is on a, a homestead and gets the opportunity to uh, uh, take in notorious uh, posse gang member Ben Wade, played by Russell Crowe, to take him to the 310 to Yuma train to take him to jail. And he's being paid by the Pinkertons a lot of money to do so. And it's a story of pride more than anything. It's a story of not even redemption, but it's how you look in your son's eyes, like how how you want to be remembered as a man. That's the whole narrative here. And honestly, the whole it starts off with Christian Bale, uh, you know, through his uh, son's eyes is, is not respected. And it turns into how does Russell Crowe's character, Ben Wade, want to be remembered? It's a very nuanced uh transition there which i did not expect from kind of just a you know rough and tumble western where take him to the train and everybody shooting everybody it's so much more nuanced than did that. you know this was a james mangold movie before you watched it? i did not yeah see if you did then you probably would have re- re- felt real quick <laughs> oh, there's gotta be something in here about sad dads yeah no, uh, <laughs> but man so well done honestly like i was blown away by the performances and and the and the turn and honestly, the word here is nuance. It's not in your face what yeah. they're doing the whole time. They're building this whole trajectory that you just kind of don't see coming. Yeah. And man, what a what a great! But then it's still peppered by so much violence and so much mm-hmm. like grit that it's it just works on all levels. It, this film is really interesting to me because it didn't do all that. It was not commercially very successful. It, it made its money back a little bit, but it, it didn't do real real well for a, a pretty 
great cast and yeah. a great director. Um, and I've talked to a lot of people that have not seen this film, and I yeah. love Western films. I love Western. Mm-hmm. I love modern westerns as well. And this, I couldn't this believe was, I hadn't this seen was this. nominated for some awards. It was. It was. It's got like a ninety on Rotten Tomatoes. It's a remake of a classic too. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm always confused why people haven't seen this, but I, I think it's just very good. Um, I think it's a really well yeah. done match. Uh, I think really westerns lacking. tend to fall through the cracks for the most. It's part. too bad because there there are there are, westerns can be some of the greatest canvases to tell even nuanced stories. Maybe maybe also for dad stories yeah but yeah like, a lot, lot of that uh, like it's, but, it's 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 a yeah and you tell you tell ma yeah you tell ma and i'm like sobbing <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will. i'll tell her i'm not leaving you pa uh you've seen this red yeah yeah for sure yeah. It's, it's been a while I, I probably uh should rewatch it ben foster uh plays just a cold-hearted bastard yeah holy shit uh ben foster's in another movie have you seen um any other movies that he's in yeah, he's saw, in a film called Leave, Leave No, no Trace. Trace. Yeah, it's, it's very a good. Really, really good. Film. It's a B movie. It's not a B movie. No, I mean, I mean, I give it a cinema score of B. It's not. And you give it an A plus 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 plus. I mean, not just me, but it literally has a rating of a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It does so. not. It does. I'd give it an A minus. Oh, Brad's on my side. No, I'm not on your side at all. <laughs> <laughs> you just whoa, said whoa. that it's not worth a hundred percent. Brad doesn't give like an A minus. A-. Is a ninety-one. Right, right. 91's a pretty good score. Yeah, 91's a great score. Yeah, B's 80, so there you go. Yeah, it's less than did, did, did we did well. That's what I watched. All right. Oh. Well, what about trailers? Um, have you heard a song on trailers lately, Brad? I haven't. I've been wanting to hear a good one lately. Yeah, I did it last time, so you come up with them, Brad. Brad, and go. You do, you can't just like... Oh, yeah. how this works. That's, yeah. no, that, that's what you do to me every week. So you know what, Brad? It's your turn, and go. No, that's not how this works. Nate... Okay, Brad and go. Here we are uh, watching trailers. Here we are uh, watching trailers. Ben and Brad and Nate and trailers. Watching trailers for the podcast. We're here. Ah, I'll take that. That's like, no, not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, bad. shut up. All you got to do is think of a song and put lyrics to it. Yeah, yeah. Super easy. <laughs> not hard. Just did it just now. Did you? Return of the Planet of the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, All right. The director, longest title ever. No, <laughs> the, definitely not. The Kingdom not of the Planet close. of the Apes. Uh, director Wes Ball breathes new life into the global epic franchise Does set. He? What? What is this, the Today Show? Yeah. Does he, though? Several generations of the future following Caesar's reign. By the way, I'm going to tell you, not seen any of these. You're not missing much. I, I don't tr- know. First of all, that's not fucking. True I don't at all. know why I would want to watch so, a bunch of. I don't like. Why him. not just put people in there? I don't like them. Ben, first of all, you only saw Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I right? saw everything except for the last one. You didn't. I don't think you saw Dawn. Did you? The, what's the last one? The last one is War for the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, didn't see that one. But I don't think you saw the second one either. No, I, thought I, we, I, I thought we talked about this, and you hadn't seen the second one either. I think you only saw the one with James Franco. I'm pretty sure I saw that one and the one with Woody Harrelson. That's the third one. Well, so I've seen up to the third one then. So you've seen them all? No, no. What's, <laughs> wait, what's the... This is, is the third it, have one. Have there only been three? Yeah, it's Rise of the Planet of the Apes, it's Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and War for the Planet who, of the Apes. Honestly, and who, Kingdom who, of the Planet of the who Apes. Are the, who are the uh, the actual actors in the second one? Gary Oldman and Jason Clark. Oh, see, I don't know if I've seen that one then. Yeah, see, so... I saw James Franco one and I didn't love it, so, so then I passed on the other the two. The James Franco one is not the best, but it's not... Terrible. I I, I like the, the Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I think Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is fantastic. I think War for the Planet of the Apes is incredible. A lot of it is it's bolstered by incredible visual effects and amazing performances by Andy Apes. Circus. By the uh, uh, Andy Circus, who is Caesar. Uh, Terry Notary, who is a great motion capture performer. Uh, and the third one has Steve Zahn in a surprisingly incredible dramatic role that is also a motion capture performance as an ape. I didn't even realize it was Steve Zahn until I saw his name in the credits. Wait, does Steve Zahn actually do the motion capture? Capture. Yeah, the number one thing about this trailer that I, that I recognize is evidently um, technology to make apes look more human, uh, or, or sorry, apes to make make them look more realistic has not come come a long way since the first one. Like they look, they don't look any better. So I think that you need to fix the settings on your TV because I have noticed that digital effects movies that are primarily digital effects look fake on your tv you have too your, nice of a tv yeah your your set your, your, your settings need to be adjusted i saw the trailer i'm like this looks like the first one with james franco like they've done no, nothing to upgrade the monkeys it's not even remotely close but if you go back and watch Rise of the Apes, of, i'm just joking you can see that the original effects but i will tell you it, it doesn't look like that much of a of an advance it, it absolutely is it's just not a world i care much about honestly no, here's the thing i if i were you 
I would I would give them a shot because okay. I think that if you if you watch Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War for the Planet of the Apes, I think that you will like them. Okay. A lot. Is there a lot of father son stuff for Nate to dig his teeth? Yeah, into? is there any sad parts? Because you know I love sad movies. A hundred percent. For okay. him to dig his orangutan incisors. Is there into? a dead mom? Is there a dead mom? Y- yes. Yes. All right, then I'm in. Yeah, and no, but they're we'll say they're yes. they're very very good. I I had no affinity for Planet of the yep. Apes going into Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and even after I saw Rise of the Planet of the Apes, I was just like, yeah, this was fine. Uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is when I was like, okay, this is great, and War for the Planet of the Apes was awesome. I, I just think that they're very well done. I think this looks particularly good as well. It looks like an uh, it's an evolution of they're they're kind of getting back towards the Planet of the Apes uh, timeline because this is a prequel or after? so technically, yeah. The, the idea is the, uh, the idea of the of the first trilogy was that they were supposed to be like prequels that would lead to Planet of the Apes. And I think that the hope now, the theory running theory is that as we get closer to Planet of the Apes, that maybe they will do a proper remake of Planet of the Apes with like, but a different perspective. So it's not just th- Tim Burton doing bullshit again. This seems to be, in this trailer at least, that l- the roles are literally reversed. In a way, yeah. Right, where where, where the, the uh, monkeys are, you know, the, the they're humans. Apes, they're the, apes. Sorry. The apes are, you know, at Starbucks. And throwing you know uh, apples into the into the uh, forest, and then the the monkeys slash humans are eating. Oh, they, you know, that's the it's, it's that, literally was the that bit. crazy though? Or I will was say one that, of them an orangutan. Yeah, yes. one, one, oh, yeah. Of the, one of the apes is an orangutan. Okay, yeah. it looked like it. So Doctor, I, I don't Dr. know anything Zhibago. about the characters. It's, it's, so. it's not Doctor Zayas. It's that that that, but the character is supposed to kind of look like him. Uh, but <laughs> I will say, I will say, my favorite Starbucks experience is throwing apples at apes. That's definitely the thing that I like doing. Yeah, the, the monkeys are just like having Starbucks and like in their Teslas, and then it's like, oh, look at these apes in the forest, and they just chuck them, you know, some some leftover apples. Did you watch the trailer? Or did you just make it? up? I just don't want to see this movie. I don't care. I just don't care. Nate, I would love to hear what you, your reaction is to the the other Planet of the Apes movies because I think that you would enjoy them. All right. Well, maybe one of you. Can well, what do you think about this it. trailer, Nate? I think the trailer looks visually fine. Like yeah. it is a, it, it looks great. It looks like a world. I just, again, I I'm having a hard time caring about a world that is ran by apes. So I, that I, so I, that that's the thing is Andy Circus does such incredible work as Caesar that he and and the visual effects are done so well to bring his performance to life and the apes feels that realistic so that you really end up being invested in them as characters. Is, is this a world that humans were once in that now humans are extinct and so now the apes Not not ex, not extinct but now apes have evolved and they have started to become the dominant species on the planet. Yeah, no that's going to give me nightmares. Yeah, so apes apes talk and have tools and guns and and the humans are just yeah. savages, and the first the three movies kind of show how that evolution happens as well. Gotcha. Yeah, but they're they're very good. I think you you should check them out. Maybe I'll assign them to you. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, that's that's it for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I'm very excited about it. Obviously, Ben is a stick in the mud, and Nate is potentially on the fence. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, I, I do trust you. And um, you know what? Go bananas, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Fall I am, guy. I'm far more excited about this next one. Fall guy. We're gonna talk about the trailer for the Fall Guy, yeah. which is a new movie from director David Leach, famously worked on the John Wick movies. This is an action comedy and even romance, starring Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt, where Ryan Gosling plays a stuntman on Hollywood movies, uh, and he gets caught up in some uh, action and intrigue. And uh, Emily Blunt is there along for the ride. Just adorable. This right, just Emily looks oh, is adorable. honestly like just uh, fuck it. The chemistry alone, yeah. yeah. Just, and and Ryan mean, Gosling, I just the Gosselinasans is just wonderful. The Gosselinasans, <laughs> and honestly, uh, let me be blunt. I love her. <laughs> um, and Winston Duke, love that guy. Yeah, Winston Duke is great too. Um, that's uh, Mbaku from the yeah, from, Black uh, Panther, the Black movies. Panther series. Yeah, I just he, I love, I genuinely just love the stuff he does. This looks so fantastic. Yeah, this just looks like a great mix of yes. of a bunch of different stuff. It looks like a lot of fun. The action looks incredible. Uh, it looks funny. I like looks the chemistry hilarious. between Blunt and Gosling. This just uh, all of a sudden, this just became like one of my most anticipated <laughs> movies of 2024. No, honestly, it looks incredible. Like it, it's. It's literally firing on every single cylinder that I want a movie like this to be. These are the films I love, right? They, they've got an action. They've got clearly some kind of romance to it, but also just so much comedy. And and it, comes, pers- it does come and, from the chemistry, though. It has, it has personality, and this is yeah. the kind of And thing- Ryan Gosling can pull it off. And this is the kind of thing that frustrated me about a movie like The Gray Man, which I think is just okay, because I don't think it utilizes either Chris Evans or Ryan Gosling to their full potential. Both great actors, yeah. And I feel like it wastes them in just like, 
you know, humdrum settings and like action that is decently choreographed, but isn't all that exciting. There's no, there's no like chemistry or humor in it either. Is there, I've never seen the gray man, but that's what I try. They try and like, there's little bits, but it it doesn't feel organic. It doesn't feel like it ever really lands firmly for me. Like I, I didn't really love the gray man. Uh, same thing with kind of ghosted is supposed to be this type of film. I still haven't seen that yet. And, and it does fall a little flat. Yeah. I know you love, (laughs) (laughs) but, but I do feel like, and, and maybe this is because, uh, Anna de Amaris is uh, not a native English speaker, and so the chemistry is a little harder because in that movie, in, the, in Ghosted, it, it just feels a little stilted, and yeah. I wonder if it's because there's a language barrier there. And because wh- isn't she in the Gray Man as well? Who's in the uh, Gray Man? Yes, I think she is. So I, I, I she? not to put Maybe too fine of a good. point on it, but like there is a bit of a challenge there with making real chemistry happen when somebody's not a native English speaker, and, and it just is a little hard. Uh, the Gray Man stars. Yep, uh, Ryan Gosling, yeah. Chris Evans, and yeah. Anna de Armas. Just so shows you how memorable it was. Your your girlfriend is the problem. I'll talk to her. Wow, but, but Emily Blunt, Emily Emily Blunt. She just uh, she knows what she's doing. And Ryan Gosling. Just if you just let him be funny in a movie, you're you're gonna get gold. You're gonna get gold. And, it, and it's every not, single time. And that's the thing. It's not. Uh, he's not a comedic actor. It's just him. He is. He, no, no, no! But he, he's, no, no, he's not. He's not Carey. trying. He's not oh. trying to be funny. He's just so good at being an actor that he can be funny yep. without even okay, yep. like trying to be funny. It's yeah, exactly. It's, it's the it's the reason him and Adam Driver are such great SNL hosts. What what was oh, I cannot uh, the nice guys? He was in the nice yes, guys, right? Yeah. So funny, the nice so guys. funny. Like he just does that kind of unassuming humor. And, so and even to a certain extent, like, that's where Chris Hemsworth uh, excels yeah. as well because he's not. They're not comedians they're not going for the joke but they're just they're playing these serious roles in a way that is funny yeah it's mm-hmm. just really well done yeah i cannot wait to see this movie it is happen. a unique it seems like a unique skill to some of these guys that for can sure do that for really sure. well yeah and they're, compared to like a mark Wahlberg who really just can't pull that stuff off <sighs> he has pulled it off but it's not it's not always as easy for him to pull it, it, it really takes the role has to be built around yeah 100 percent. like i think he's the very other guys is He's great in the other guys. I think he's very funny in Ted, honestly. But in Ted, he really is kind of playing a version of himself. You know? And in the other guys, Will Ferrell is great foil to to interact yeah, with. Exactly. He just has to be like the staunch, you know, s- super serious version that, that's played for laughs. Yeah. Right. So yeah, Mark Wahlberg can do it from time to time, but it's uh, it's not quite on the level as like a Ryan no, Gosling. No. Or, it's a it's a different animal. Yeah, like a monkey. Mm. Or uh, an ape. An ape. <laughs> um, okay wow but yeah so uh the fall guy that comes out uh in 2024 yeah march so 3rd, right march uh, no 3rd. march 1st kingdom march of the planet of the apes comes out march or may 24th yeah and the fall guy comes out march 1st Ex- there you go so we're looking ahead to 2024 guys we did it well there's nothing really that's coming out like towards like i feel like everything's getting moved back now because yeah a lot of stuff got pushed pushed because of the yeah, actor strike because dune the, is in 2027 now the the studios don't have actors to promote the movies and even if they they even if the strike ends here in the next couple weeks it's not enough time to like really get that stuff organized and get probably just gonna last through the holidays at this point there'll still be some uh prestige award winners that are like hitting theaters that have already been on the festival circuit and stuff like that but those will also come out in january and february leading up to the oscars so all right well real quick we, we got a little bit of time do you guys want to play a game what, i would love to play what a game. time are we at nate we're at 104 that's fine. Let's play a game. I love playing a game. Let's play a nice game. Do well, you want to play a game? As you guys know, because I know you did your research. Of course. Uh, the Fall Guy is based on a TV show. Um, a TV show that was in the 80s that uh, um, is getting remade into a film right now. And so I decided to look through the list of TV shows that were turned into movies. Oof. These aren't movies that were turned into TV shows, but m- TV shows that were turned into films. There were a bunch of these in the 90s. They We loved them in the 90s, yeah. yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the cast of this these films. Mm-hmm. I'll even give you the year the film was made. Oh. And you guys have to tell me what the film was. Oh. Okay. Yeah? You good? Yeah, no. All right, all right, I'll, do, I'll do my best. All right. all right. We need buzzers from you. Okay. Ben? Brad? No, oh, Brad. Huh. Okay, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, Ben. Honk. All right, that, that's good, but whatever. What, what the fuck? <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, 2010 film starring, and as soon as you know, you you you, you guess, okay? You do your sign. Patrick Wilson. Honk. Yep. Get smart. No. What? <laughs> oh, shit. I thought you said Patrick Warburton. No. <laughs> shit. Idiot. 
Shit. Jessica Biel. Bradley Cooper. Huh. Yep. The A team. God damn it. Correct. Did either of you see that? Yes, I, I did. did. Yeah. I don't think I did. It wasn't great. Yeah. Okay. Oh, are you sure it was start? It started Quentin Rampage Jackson as Mr. T. Yeah, his uh, first and last yeah, exactly. movie. Exactly. <laughs> All right, here we go. 1997 film. Johnny Galecki, Sandra O. Oh, Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Peter McNichol, Rowan Atkinson. Huh. Yep. Bean. Correct. Wow. <laughs> All right. 1993 film. Burt Reynolds and Bean. I forgot Burt Reynolds was in Bean. Yeah. Uh, 1993 film. Uh, Jim Varney. Lily Tomlin. Huh. Yep. The Beverly Hillbillies. Wow, that is impressive. Nice. Uh, I didn't even get to get to Rod, Rob Schneider. Um, <laughs> Steve, uh, 2005 film. Steve Carell. Bam. Yep. Or honk. <laughs> Get smart. There it is. No. <laughs> ah, son of a bitch. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, huh. oh yep. shit. Bewitched. Correct. Ah, <laughs> son of a bitch. No, I should have known better. Hi, yes, Sammy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Guess what came out way later than 2005. Steve Carell. No, uh, it is right around there, actually, I think. Uh, really? Stephen Colbert, Michael Caine, Shirley MacLaine, Will Ferrell, and Nicole Kidman in Bewitched. All right, here we go. Um, RuPaul. Huh. Well, yep. Come on. The Brady Bunch movie. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Motherfucker, I know these movies. <laughs> yes, you do. Good Lord. <laughs> All right. RuPaul, the Brady Bunch <laughs> Who the fuck? <laughs> Okay, you have too much time on your hands. I know. How did you know that? That was incredible. It's actually, that's actually just a, more of a unique circumstance where I, I grew up watching the Brady Bunch all the time. I with, grew up watching RuPaul. Uh, with my mom, because <laughs> she, she grew up on the Brady Bunch, and so when the movie came on, out- On uh, uh, WB, or what was it, WGN? It, I think a lot of time it was on WGN, yeah. yeah. Uh, but So we watched Brady Bunch a lot, and so yeah, when, like the, when, the, marathon. when the movie came out, we were very excited, and it's it's very funny, because it's basically like a spoof of the Brady Bunch, mm. but yeah, that's-, that's I mean, I know uh, that Gene Smart's well. in that, Michael McKean. And Christine Taylor, Chris, Christopher Daniel Barnes, Shelley Long, and Gary Cole. Uh, Nate, do you know who Christopher Daniel Barnes is? No, who is that? He's the voice of Prince Eric from The Little Mermaid. No way. Yeah. Greg Brady in the Brady Bunch movie. All right. 1994 film, Jeremy Piven, Daniel Baldwin, Rosie O'Donnell, Nipsey Russell, Fran Drescher, John C. McGinley. I'll read that again. 1994 film. Jeremy Piven, Daniel Baldwin, Rosie O'Donnell, Nipsey Russell, Fran Drescher. Can anybody do a good Fran Drescher? <laughs> John C. McGinley. Yeah, I don't even know what this is. Like, I don't even know what the movie is, let alone what TV show it's based on, which would presumably have the same title. Cool, Brad. Do you know Ben? Hey, have you got any right yet, Ben? H- honk. Yeah, what? PCU. <laughs> Pretty sure PCU is not. <laughs> Car 54, where are you? Ah, yeah. See, I know about that movie, but I, didn't, I had no idea that who was in it. All right. 2017 film. David Keckner, Adam Brody, Rosa Salazar, Vincent D'Onofrio, Dax Shepard. Huh. Yep. Chips. Correct. Nice. Michael Pena. Michael Pena. Yeah. All right, uh, 1987 film, Dabney Coleman. That gives you nothing because Dabney Coleman was in every film. Yes, everything. <laughs> uh, uh, Harry Morgan, Christopher Plummer, Tom Hanks, Dan Aykroyd. Honk. Yep. Dragnet. Yeah. Correct. Finally hey, got one. Hey. Hey, you know, so did you ever watch the remake of Dragnet, the series in like the early 2000s with Ed O'Neill and Ethan Embry? No, it was any no. good. I really liked it. I thought it was it was great. And it, it had an especially cool version of the Dragnet theme song too. I really liked it and it only lasted a season. I was really bummed when it got canceled. Huh. All right. A 2020 film. Oh boy. Michael Rooker. Jimmy O. Yang. Lucy Hale. Who's in lots of Hallmark Christmas movies now? Uh, Maggie Q and Michael Pena. Again, 2020 film: Michael Rooker, Jimmy O Yang, Lucy Hale, My- Maggie Q, and Michael Pena. Michael Pena, Michael Rooker, and a movie based hmm. on a TV show. 
Correct. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know this one. Yeah. Fantasy Island. Ah, Oof. yeah. I forgot they made that. Two percent. I, I never saw that. Did, is it really that bad? It's, it got like seven percent or something. It was pretty. Terrible. All right. Uh, just a couple more. Uh, 2008 film. James Con, the late James Con, right? Mm-hmm. Green Pass. Yep. Uh, Terrence Stamp, Alan Arkin, another the late Alan Arkin. I loved Alan Arkin so great. much. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Ha. Huh. Yep. Get smart. Mother- Correct. <laughs> Son of a- <laughs> um, all right. Uh, two years later. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. 2002. Gary Cole. Hawk. Yep. Again, uh, a very Brady sequel. No. That is a good guess. <laughs> I do love that, that guess. <laughs> it's a good guess. I did try to get ahead of one for once. <laughs> Hawk. <laughs> Fucking trying here. Gary Cole. Malcolm McDowell. Famke Jansen. Owen Wilson and Eddie Murphy. Hey. Yep. I spy. Yes. With my eye, Ben losing this game. Yeah, I tried, okay. All right, one more. This is the last one, because I, I want to know if you guys have seen this. I had not even heard of this film. Christine Ebersol, Wallace Shaw. Wait, what, what, what year? Oh, sorry. 2002. 2002. Christine Ebersol, Wallace Shawn, Shaw. Daryl Hannah, Elizabeth Hurley, Christopher Lloyd, Jeff Daniels. Yep. My favorite Martian. Wow. Ooh, wow, yeah. I've not even heard of this film. Did you see it? It's a Disney movie. I didn't yeah. see it. I didn't see it. I just mm-hmm. know it. I heard of the series. Yeah. And then I heard that this was not a very good movie. Yeah, yeah I've got I mean, I, I'm not gonna go through any more, but I, I had uh the, <laughs> nineteen more. Yeah, I know the event I mean there's so many. There are. The oh, Avengers yeah, um not the Marvel Avengers, but there's another the British Avengers. Dark Shadows made in two thousand twelve. The Mod Squad. Um uh, Miami SWAT. Vice in two thousand six. SWAT. Um, yeah, Plot. so just so Mission many, Impossible. so many films that were made. Tons. Based on TV Quantum shows. Quantum Leap. Yep. Very Except famous. there was no film there, yeah, but they did no. redo the series. They did. That's uh, all I got, guys. Sorry. Fun stuff. Good job, Ben. I, yeah, you know what, guys? I was I hung in there the best I could for about I, I, <laughs> none. Yeah. None of it. You ch- and you know what? You tried Get Smart three times. Uh, and you know what? And then the he one, stole it from the, you. The one time that it was Get Smart. Didn't get it. Yeah, he didn't know. But uh, so, good stuff. Nice job, Nate. Terrence thanks. Stamp. Thanks a lot for the game. Hey, you, well, hey, Alan you guys. Arkin. You guys. I want to say this. I believe in you guys. All right. Oh, I believe in me too. I believe Honk. in you guys. <laughs> uh, did you ever see the Brady Bunch movie, Ben? I did actually. I had a big crush on Christine Taylor. Oof, she looks who, who, great as Marsha in that movie. She just looks great. She, that's that's true. She's she still looks great. Yeah, yeah, she's she's fantastic. Yeah, she's aged better than the three of us. Oh, combined. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, the three of us combined is <laughs> something that no one should visualize ever. I don't know. I'd like I'd like to think about it. Hey, uh, <laughs> we don't have a, a 10 to 1 podcast this week, but we will be back next week. Uh, those of you that are listening to our Saturday Night Live re- recap and rewatch yes. uh, podcast, who's who's on the show next week? Timmy C. What? Timmy C. Who? Timothy Chalamet. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Timothy, Timothy Chalamet. And then, uh, and in, then in November, followed by later Jason in November, Momoa. Momoa. Yes. So yeah, Timmy That's C. the one I'm more excited about, actually. And oh, I can't wait for Jason Timmy. Momoa are yeah. coming. Yeah. Both going to be great. Going to be good stuff. So make sure you check out the 10 to 1 podcast if you like Saturday Night Live. And if you don't, maybe you'll become a fan. Maybe you'll like listen to us talk about the show. There's uh, good things. Do not let the opening sketch, the yeah, cold yeah. open, ruin don't SNL. Don't let the cold <laughs> open ruin your diet. Yeah, just just give it a chance. Watch through. See just, you know what? Don't watch the cold open. See how many it's sketches. Tune in it's about very 10, rarely 10 the best minutes sketch. into the show. See how many sketches you like. Enjoy it. Uh, and if you enjoy this podcast, make sure to give us five stars on, on iTunes. Uh, or jam sesh, or, uh, or ear, ear holes. Ear hole. Ear uh, holes a good one. Yeah, wherever you listen to your podcast, give us five yep. stars. Or submit a review. Tell us, tell us what you like about the show, and uh, yeah, just tell your friends. We like we like getting new people listening to the podcast. Go flixyourselfpod dot com. Yeah. yeah, no, we are on the internet. Yeah. Enjoy it in the car. There. You can leave a voicemail. Tell it. Tell it to the youths. You can you can do your best Ben impersonation, and we'll play it on the show. Yeah, that is that is true. We'll, we yeah. will do that. Well, you know what, guys? Honestly, if I'm being 100% honest, this is an okay show. <laughs> you did fine. Uh, acceptable. Bring, I, a, bring a better sponsor next time. And honestly, Nate, if you fucking eat last week's sponsor again on the there's air. There's six chips. Yeah, it's disgusting. Stop crunching the Stop chips. Stop crunching the chips. 
Bye, everybody. Bye. Nah, cheat saying, eh?